today's topic is how to create a digital online course. And it's a very interesting question. How do I create a digital online course? The truth is, is I've created hundreds of courses and no two courses are exactly the same. And it can be confusing to say this is the step-by-step -step method because you don't want to necessarily get stuck in a cookie cutter type of problem. So what we have instead of steps, like specific steps, do this and then do that, we have kind of a generalization of these are the actions that you take for each step. And they can look a little bit different based on your type of course. Now, digital on, when you say digital online course, you're specifically creating a course that's not for a classroom, it's not created for one-on-one, -on -one, it's not self-study, so it does kind of limit some of the things, and there are some similarities between them all. So before I go into my three-phase approach, which is super flexible and yet has all of the steps in them, I want to talk a little bit about the history just so that you can see what else is out there. You may have heard the term Addy get thrown about. Now, Addy is an old approach to creating courses, creating training that has been around for 70 years. It came out in the 50s by the Army. It was built on a model that came out from the Air Force called some five-step approach or something like that. Now, Addy's model has been very serviceable, but it was created in a time long before, 70 years ago, long before we had the internet or computers or anything that we have today. So a lot of the change that's happened is a result of the fact that we can do different things than what we could do before. The old method, Addy, was built on a waterfall approach. That means I'm gonna do this task and then it falls down and then you do your task and then it goes to somebody else with all of these waiting in between. Now with software development, we've come up with a lot more interesting ways to create things like using an agile methodology, which means there's a whole series of uh, methodologies that are related to agile, but it means that you're not using basically a waterfall approach. It's kind of like almost an all hands on deck, everyone gets it done and then it gets done in a short amount of time. And shortened cycles give us a lot of benefits. So with agile, what we do is shorter cycles and an iterative approach. Now, shorter cycles mean that we get feedback a lot quicker from our audience. So the old way of doing it is like you make your you know, plans up front and then you slowly go through each phase and then you have the final product and ta-da, you deliver it. It's very linear. It's very, here's the beginning and here's the end. And truly, even an iterative approach does have a beginning and an end, but you end up doing more of a cyclical approach. So you start with kind of some assumptions, you start with what your beliefs are, you do some research, and then you test, and then you go back. You know, did it work? And then you test. So it's kind of going back and forth. It also came um, up with this, type, this, this term called an MVP, a minimally viable product. This allows you to test something without putting a lot of time and effort into it just to see if it works. So you might have heard something like a POC, a proof of concept, or a beta test, or a pilot launch. These are all kind of different words. They're subtly different, but these are all general terms that mean I'm going to roll out something that isn't completely done and I'm ready to receive feedback from it. So when you go to create a course, all of this is very helpful because it lets you see that when you create a course, it isn't necessarily something that should be begun here at the beginning and then gone through every single step and then at the end you're done and you don't have to touch it again. That is an old way of doing it and it actually can be very, very frustrating. It doesn't give any room for playing and testing, getting feedback from your audience. So my three-phase approach, it could be used in a linear fashion, or you could use it in a cyclical fashion. Now, I recommend doing a cyclical because it's very helpful. Okay, so the first phase in my three-phase approach, and this is the first phase that you would use if it's linear or if it's cyclical, and this phase is called discover. Now, discover is a very broad term, but it basically means you're going to dig in, you're going to delve, you're going to do the analysis and the research, you're going to take your assumptions, test your assumptions, see if they're true, and then you're going to move forward you don't want to stay too long in there, but you also don't want to skip this step. This step is super important. This is where you do your market research. Like if you have this great idea, but nobody likes it, it's good to find that out in the discovery stage rather than waiting until you have gotten all the way to testing it with an audience. 
And sometimes you can just test the words and keep the concept the same to see if it hits better. Now, the second phase is called design. This is my favorite phase. This is the phase where you take everything that you learned in your discover phase and you play with it and you put it into a learning format. Now, this isn't just chunking. It includes chunking. It includes applying adult learning principles. It includes making your modules. It includes applying uh, Gagne's nine events of instruction, which I've um, altered and I have my own, which is really, really awesome. It's also where you manage like the attention, the cognitive load, and the active discovery. So for the students, the discovery for the students. So that is what happens in the design phase. And then you go into deliver. In deliver, you're creating your deliverables, and then you're actually getting in front of an audience and testing. Now, the first few times you do this, you're going to do like your, your first phase, the second phase, and the third phase. And after the third phase, after you've delivered it, you're going to go back. Now, most of the time, you're going to go all the way back to discover because you want to look at your assumptions again. What are the assumptions you made about the audience, about how they describe what they're going through? about how they see the solution, how they see those barriers. You wanna test those assumptions. If there's anything that's not correct in those, this is where you correct them, you make adjustments, then you go back into the design. Are there any changes you need to make in design based on what you got out of your feedback? And then you deliver it again. Typically, it depends on how rough you run it the first time and how well you know your audience, how complex the course is. But I would venture to say that most of the time you're going to run through this entire thing three to five times generally. Um, and that way, when, you're, when you've run it through the fifth time or the third time or whatever time it is when you have the results that you were looking for, because you should be setting goals. Like as a result of this course, people will be able to do fill in the blank. And as a result of that course, at the very end, when you see all of those outcomes have been met, all of your goals have been met, now you can call your course complete. Now you can make it look really super professional, make it look super nice, put in all the effort to make it look great. You can um, go ahead and charge the full price for it. You can make it evergreen. You can do a lot of, all, uh, of other things that you would wanna hold off while you're testing it. So also, I just wanna also state that it is very possible that after testing it the first or second time, you might make a decision that this isn't a course that's going to work. When you're creating an online course, and maybe I'll do a, a separate segment on this one, when you're creating an online course, it's important to recognize those times when you just need to cut your losses. It, it's very easy to get super attached to a course and, and want to make it work, even when the data isn't there to support it. So I encourage you to feel free to experiment. See every single one of your POCs, proof of concepts, and your launches. See every single one of them as an experiment, and then stick with the data. Be willing to shift things and know that you provide value. Your course may need adjustment, what your content may need adjustment, and all of that could be need to be tweaked. Maybe your audience needs to have an adjustment, like maybe you don't have the right audience, but you do have something of worth. I truly believe that God's created every single person with something of value in it. And if you can take that and put it in a course making machine and create a course that transforms lives, you've got it. I mean, you have what it takes to make a course. I believe it. The course may not work the first few times. The first couple of courses may not work the first few, few times, but you do have a course that you can make. So that's how I would create, that's how I create a digital online course. Mm -hmm.